Hey everyone, welcome to a new episode of the Fruitful Family Podcast. I'm Brad. I'm Starla. And here we share our ideas, our convictions, our thoughts, our experiences, and more in all things related to faith, family, and farming. On today's episode, we are discussing wellness. keep so many kids and yourself even remotely healthy? It's a good question, Starla. I'm glad. You're glad you asked I'm it. I'm <laughs> glad I wrote that down in the show notes. All right, so uh, beginning each episode now with just some general information to kind of kickstart our conversation. The average American spends close to $13,000 annually on healthcare. That number across the country, if you take the population, it turns out to be $4.3 trillion, with a T, trillion dollars spent in healthcare. That was in the year 2021 when that number came out. This is 2023, the end of 2023 when we're recording this, almost 2024. That's twice of most uh, other comparable countries. Um, as far as uh, national wealth. Now, despite this, you would think with $4.3 trillion going to healthcare that we would be the healthiest country on the face of the earth. 42% of Americans are obese. 9% of Americans are considered, quote, severely obese. Heart disease is the number one killer in our country. Together with cancer, heart disease, um, together, so heart disease and cancer combined make up 37% of American deaths. Mm. 37% of causes of death in America are related to heart disease and cancer. And that, that's a whole other uh, conversation that we can't have now, but uh, a lot of the the political talk is about gun control, right? That, that guns kill so many people. You, you have a 1,500% higher chance of dying from heart disease in America than by a violent gun. You are 215%, have a 215% higher chance of dying from diabetes mm. than being involved in a violent gun death. And so these numbers are staggering and... We have a responsibility to do better for our kids because whatever uh, the modern world of medicine is offering is not helping us. And so there, there has to be a better way than what is currently widespread in this country and being done. So... Uh, I'm going to begin by asking th this question of Starla. Um, so Starla, many of you know, is a licensed massage therapist. Um, and she has for a while, um, she has led our family in this aspect of pursuing wellness, like actual wellness. And, and maybe the buzzword is holistic or um, natural or and some might say alternative. Those don't always have good connotations to them. Uh, however, they're not untrue. So, but we all know this of Starla, right? That she grew up in a hippie commune. And then once she escaped the hippie commune, she joined a cult that refuses all medical treatment. And that is what has led us here, right? No. Although my name is Starla. <laughs> You have, a, you have a solid hippie I name. I do have a hippie name. I did not grow up on a hippie commune. So what led us to reconsidering health and wellness? Yeah. So I went to massage therapy school when I was 23, and that really did help me go down a path that was more alternative than mainstream medicine because I actually before that wanted to be a medical doctor. So I'm really glad I – just was really not good at biology in college. It was really hard. Um, 
but my growing up I had antibiotics all the time I just always had ear infections and sinus infections and they never seemed to go away and the antibiotics I didn't like them and it didn't really ever seem to help much um, and then my mom struggled with severe pain in her early 50s and she realized that if she didn't eat certain food she felt a whole lot better so that was enough for me and then I, I was a hospice chaplain in my mid 20s and I sat with a lot of 40 year olds dying of cancer mm. and so all those things combined I just did not I don't want that for us I don't want that for our family um, I knew there had to be a better way uh, and so there is just there's so much research out there that's good research about how to help our bodies to be healthy and not get cancer in the first place or heal our body uh, and get the cancer to go away on its own. Um, and obviously we believe that all healing comes from the Lord. Um, and sometimes God does use medicine. Right. Sometimes he uses sure. modern allopathic medicine. Um, however, any allopathic medicine that we take has side effects. Whereas a lot of the medicine that comes from nature, that comes from the ground that God created, doesn't have the side effects that allopathic modern Western medicine medicine has. Challenge to all of our listeners is the next time that you watch a TV show oh. <laughs> and you hear uh, a commercial because it's just that's. You watched the TV show with me once, and it was like three out of four commercials were for medications. Yep. Um, so pick one out. You choose. And pay attention to all of the side effects that are mentioned to, to clear up eczema. Right? It causes, like, ulcers and things like like. Medicine to fix your skin shouldn't cause you ulcers and bleeding out of your eyes and like weird, like loss of vision. Uh, obviously, I'm exaggerating to some degree, but I'm not really. No, I mean, a lot of them are terrible. So challenge to listeners. Listen to one of those commercials and then tell me why you want to take five or six different pharmaceutical medications. So once you start taking one medication, your chances of being on two or three or four medications not very long afterwards are very high. Because our modern our modern medicine machine is not meant to heal you. Uh, it's, it's meant to create customers. And so what you're doing or what they're doing is they're, they're treating symptoms often which triggers other symptoms, which you, gives you these side effects, which allows them to prescribe to you four more medications to cover all of those symptoms. And down the rabbit hole you go, and up go their bank accounts. Right. So Hippocrates said, I think it was him, let food be thy medicine. And really, our medicine has to start with good food. So that's a great transition to what we... Kind of the gist of this conversation here. This won't be one of our longest ones, but we want to just share. So we have we have seven kids in our home. Um, we have had very happy and healthy pregnancies, mm -hmm. and of of those seven, how many were born at home? Four. Yeah, it is four. Four of them. Four of those seven uh, born at home. Um. So, uh, what do what do we do? What are, we want to go through some of the things that we do to help keep our family happy and healthy. And I will mention this at the end. I will mention this again. We are not medical professionals. We are not diagnosing problems that you have. We are not prescribing for you to do certain things or to take certain things for certain conditions that you have. What we are describing to you is a wellness plan that we have cultivated for our family that serves us well. Um, so 
it's unfortunate we have to always give that disclaimer, uh, especially owning a business in the natural wellness industry. Anytime we talk about it and its benefits, we have to give those disclaimers as well. Mm-hmm. So, all right. So yes, what? So food. I, if you can grow it, great. That's the best. Vegetables from your property. You're gonna pick them fresh. You're gonna lacto ferment them fresh. You're gonna freeze them fresh. That's the best because your soil is probably less depleted than the stuff that you're buying at the grocery store, and it has more nutrients. So one, if you can grow it, if you can raise it, grass-fed meat is the best. That's typically, that's one of the first ways that we care for ourselves right now, medicinally, is that we eat all of an animal. Well, we don't eat the skin, but, you know, we eat organ meat, we make bone broth from the bones, and we grow a lot of the meat that we consume. Uh, And it's it's grass-fed. We recently put over 200 pounds of meat in our freezer, and every single ounce of that came off of our land, either through raising it, um, one of our pigs, and hunting. Yep. So we eat good fats. We we eat grass-fed lard, which has vitamin D and lots of other good things for you. We get uh, grass-fed butter. We buy raw milk right now because we don't have a cow right now. So we buy raw milk. Um, we, we eat mostly organic or better than organic if we can find someone local who is growing something that we're not. Um, we shop at Costco. Costco is a great place to get a lot of organic things. We buy food from Azure Standard. That's a great place to get a lot of organic things. And we buy food from Whole Life Food Buying Club in Louisville. Um, So getting good nutrient-dense food in your body is, is the first way to be healthy. Your children will eat it. They will. It might not be their... Every meal that you make isn't going to be their favorite. Liver might not be their favorite, but a few bites of liver with their dinner is still a million times better than a a McDonald's Happy Meal. You know, like kids don't need to eat a huge plate of food every meal. They just don't. No child has done that historically. If you look at pictures of children from 100 years ago, they were all so skinny. And it's because they were outside playing all the time and probably every meal that their mama made wasn't their favorite. So it's okay. So food food is the first step in wellness. So whatever whatever you're putting in your body will determine how well your body functions. If you put um because that's what our bodies were made to run off of, right? So just as a car engine was made to run off of gasoline. Mm-hmm. Right. If if you were to put water in that car engine, it is not designed to run off of that fuel. Therefore, it will seize up and not work properly and it will shut down and break down. And your body does the exact same thing mm-hmm. with food. So, and and just as an encouragement, a lot of the things Starla said are things that that we are raising and growing. But there are farmers markets all over this country. All you got to do is just go and ask the, the producer, you know, where did you grow this? Where is it? Can I can I come see your farm? Do you spray things on your just ask a few simple questions and you will find good whole food. And you don't have to go to the store to to Whole Foods. You don't have to be that person. You don't you, you can be. You can be. You don't, but you don't have to go to Trader Joe's. You don't have to go to Whole Foods. You don't have to go to all those places. There, there is probably more food around you than you realize. And if you think you can't afford it, it's just not true. If you look at how much you spend on junk food and how much you spend on going out to eat, you could almost always buy organic or better than organic. With that same amount of money. I would encourage you to listen to Joel Salatin. He 
talks about uh, the the hidden cost of food. Mm-hmm. And so whenever whenever you eat um, terrible or cheap food, the the trade off comes in that thirteen thousand dollars of annually that that you are spending that four point three trillion dollars that Americans are spending on health care. You're you're seeing that cost go to other places. And so he he talks about it. We'd highly recommend you searching and listening to because he is extremely smart and educated and knows the studies where he can point those things out. So starting at one, food, right? Mm-hmm. That's how we cultivate wellness. Yep, food. And if you want to have some junk food, make it yourself with organic sugar, organic flour, grass-fed stuff. It tastes better. Your children will still love it just as much as the junk food from the store. And it won't be that junky, and you're not going to binge eat it. You just you probably won't. We we it's harder to consume a whole pie that you made than it is to go to the store and pick up a box of whatever it is that they I can eat a sleeve of Oreos with the best of them. <laughs> right. <laughs> but if you made the Oreos, you might we just we value things differently when we've created ourselves. We yep. just do. Yep. It's how, it's how we're made. So So number one, food food is for wellness. Number two is exercise. Uh, I I was able to preach at our church a few weeks ago, and and I got to pr- preach the verse that was in the selection that I was given was to work out your mm-hmm. salvation with fear and trembling, right? And so one of the points that I made is that even if you eat the healthiest food from one source, if you were to grow everything yourself on your own land, you processed everything yourself, and that's all you ate, but you never moved, your body would be unhealthy. Your body would be sick if you don't move it. Your body was meant to move. So you have to exercise. And that looks differently for us than it does for some people. Some of you go to Planet Fitness and pay $10 a month and get on an elliptical and uh, lift some weights and you can't grunt. You can't do you know that you can't grunt at I can work fitness. out there <laughs> can't you cannot grunt in planet grunter. fitness oh hmm. so if you're a grunter you got to go somewhere else go there. Um, but for us exercise looks like farm chores mm-hmm. it's going out and um, sometimes chopping wood but I blew my shoulder out so I got to carry wood to the splitter but nonetheless it's still still exercise. I'm Mm -hmm. still moving. Um, when we went full-time farming, I think I lost 30 pounds Mm -hmm. within a matter of months. And that was just because I was moving chickens twice a day. I was milking cows twice a day. I was walking a lot. Um, and you weren't eating as much. And I, yeah. And I wasn't going out and eating to touch on the other point. I wasn't going out and eating anything. Um, uh, we have done, when we had time, when our business, this has been a very busy season for our business, uh, but we were doing martial arts. Mm-hmm. Um, I was doing Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, and Starla had just started doing Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu. Mm-hmm. Um, the kids were doing Judo, mm-hmm. and uh, that was, I and I would highly recommend it. And this is why. One, because it was just, a lot of fun but two considering that heart disease is the number one leading cause of death in our country it is extremely cardiovascular workout Mm -hmm. so um you are your heart rate is pumping your it is working you're moving and it is it is moving blood and oxygen through your body and it is building strength uh, within itself is getting healthy and circulating and you're sweating and getting other toxins out also and starla learned this after her just after her first session is that in a sport like brazilian jiu-jitsu you are using muscles you didn't even know existed or have never 
ever really put under a stressful condition. Or have just not used them in the last 10 years. <laughs> <laughs> because my first week or two weeks after starting jujitsu, I, I just couldn't move. I was just, you know, but I was a glutton for the pain. Like I kept going back to class. Um, but Starla found that out too, that when she started, like, but it is moving, is moving and working so many muscles in your body. And so mm -hmm. I, I would highly recommend something of that and, and do your research there. If you are in the worst shape you've, you've ever been in your life, go find a jujitsu gym and start slow. Um, and if they don't welcome you, leave them and go find a different gym because there are gyms out there that want to serve you and help you. Um, what do our kids do? Yeah, I mean, our kids ride their bikes, they run, they chase each other, they jump on the trampoline, they do monkey bars, they, they do push-ups. They judo throw each other. They chase each other. Yeah. They bang sticks on things. So, the point is, move. Do something. Find something to do, and... And it could be the simplest thing of just learning, just going for a walk uh, consistently. All right. So number three. So food, exercise. Number three. How do we cultivate wellness? Uh, oh, yeah. Avoid pharmaceuticals unless they're absolutely necessary. And I would say with that, too. Okay. So there might be some emergency situation where you do have to be on pharmaceuticals. Do whatever you can to get off of them because they just usually are not good for the health of your body for longevity. Yeah, um, so if you have to go on something short term, do it, but then do whatever it takes to get off of it to be healthy. We believe that one of the reasons that we, we are well in general is that we don't run to that as a first solution. And, and that can be a dangerous thing that when when you just you feel a cold coming, like you're you're running to the doctor, you're getting a prescription. And so we we're not saying that we're opposed to it. Uh, ultimately, what we're saying is don't rush into it. Um, we've done breathing treatments. We've done we've done all of those things with our kids and we've. Well, we had a kid who had asthma for a while. Right. Who needed some allopathic medicine, but she also just needed a lot of alternative medicine. And it turns out she needed good food. Mm -hmm. When we when we took her off of processed dairy, her symptoms virtually disappeared. Yeah, she did need a break from any sort of dairy for a while. Right. Yep. But she was going into like anaphylactic shock, and so that's what it seemed like. When you're a parent and your kid can't breathe. Give them medicine, like mm -hmm. give them the right medicine to help your kid breathe. But our, our, our practice is to not rush into those unless it's something that, that we need. Yeah. If your body's sick, then you do need something. But a lot of times the something that you need might be a little bit of allopathic medicine mixed in with a whole bunch of other things that are going to help heal you. So number four, we, we have a list and a regiment of natural things that we use uh, to maintain wellness. What are some of those things that, that you've introduced mm -hmm. to us and that, yeah, so, that we do? So in general, we eat some raw seaweed weekly mm -hmm. brad doesn't but mm -mm. most mm -mm. of us do that's really good for you um we we take elderberry syrup every day which we make so you can buy from us www.abbyselderberry.com we sell four different types of elderberry syrup There's five five types of elderberry syrup four types of teas tinctures tinctures and just regular berries if you want to make your own we also sell a diy kit um so we we do that we we just started making our own fire cider for our own personal use we 
turn it into salad dressing. So we eat salad probably three times a week, at least maybe three or four. And we're getting fire cider uh, into our bodies through salad dressing. If we're sick, colloidal silver goes in their ears and we take lysine, lysine orally. powder uh, orally, like through our mouth. Mix, um, we mix that with honey. Yep. So that our littles can take it. They, we drink stinging nettle tea. or Really, it's an infusion. It's very strong and very powerful. It's great for fighting a cold or whatever. Um, if we have stomach bugs, I'll mix up some really good bentonite clay with some water and take that. We do use a few different essential oils. Um, I make a whole host of tinctures from stuff on our farm. Um, one of the things that we do that really helps me if I get sick is I'll take some orange extract that I make from uh, no spray orange peels and vodka and it really knocks out a cold quickly. We may sell that at some point. Um, we do a host of homeopathic remedies. Um, there's especially a few that I take after having a baby that are extremely helpful in getting through that time. Uh, the brand that I love is Newton Homeopathic Labs. They are great. They, their remedies are so good. And you can make more. We may do a short clip at some point of me making more homeopathic medicine, but you can take any homeopathic medicine and make more from just a few drops of the original. So you can literally make homeopathic medicine last your whole entire life, or you can pass it on to your grandkids. And I'm gonna let you. My favorite. Uh, in moderation, uh, alcohol is can be good for you. Um, I am of the school of thought. I think this is why my granddaddy, when he felt a cold coming, who was who was a dairy farmer, who didn't matter if he had pneumonia or what, like he had to go milk. He had to go milk a hundred cows twice a day. That when he felt a sickness coming on, he made a hot toddy, which was, and he was not an alcohol drinker, mm -hmm. but he would take some whiskey and some honey. Uh, and I think some lemon juice is, is that typically? Yeah. And sometimes people would add, tea to it but you could just and warm it up water. warm it up and you would drink it as kind of a, a hot drink kind of like an old fashioned uh, Theraflu kind of idea but better but better and so for me personally you know we do all of these things and if I start to feel a crud coming on I'm going to go take a shot or two of uh, bourbon. I also tend to like bourbon. Uh, so that works for me. It's a bonus. It's a bonus. But um, it does have uh, properties that will uh, that can cleanse and heal. And so uh, obviously with within moderation, um, being wise, knowing yourself, be self-aware of, of your own tendencies and things like that and how much you can handle um, but that can be uh, another option of of treating some sickness when when you start to feel it come on in addition with all these other things yeah I think the last I think this is the last one that we have it is um, and I think this one lends itself to to two ways to physical wellness um, I think it, it is a gift from God that gives us physical wellness, but I think it also creates mental wellness mm -hmm. as well for us. Yep. Um, do you want to share this one since I got to take do you the other one? Me too. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah. So have regular, this isn't what he calls it, but regular <laughs> baby making practice um, with your spouse. Um, Yes, we're it's just talking really about the S word. 
it's really important uh, for men and women to have sex on a regular basis. I would say probably for most people, multiple times a week. Um, and a lot of women, especially my age, I think they think like, oh, I don't have time for that. I don't want that. Ew. What is your age? I'm 40. Woo! I am officially 40 years old. Um, and I think that it, that comes, maybe that comes out of feminism. I'm not sure. Maybe women have always felt that way when, I don't know, after a certain point. But uh, you need sex. Your body needs sex. If you're feeling super anxious as a man or a woman, you probably are not having sex enough. You might not be eating well or exercising at all, too. But having sex makes your – it releases endorphins. It makes you feel more in love with your spouse. It makes you love them and appreciate them more. And it just makes you feel good, makes your body feel good, makes your brain feel good. Please notice how we are describing this and how we are instructing you to use this good gift is to do this with your spouse. Do not just go and do that as which is that which is an abomination to the Lord. Um, do not dishonor uh, God's design for man and woman to come together within the confines of marriage. Mm -hmm. this is this is a it, and it can be perverted and corrupted uh, to actually have the opposite effect however when used as god has given it uh, to married couples male and female uh, to enjoy together and it can have wonderful physical and mental wellness effects on your life and so those are those are a few of the things that that we do uh, as a family um, and as a couple that we don't necessarily do all of those things as a family. But right. It makes a family. Well, that's what I was gonna say. Like having sex one leads to another. Makes the babies, <laughs> which you then have to physically care for. So. So real quick, as we're as we're bringing this down, we're landing the plane here. If you were to give some counsel to folks. Who are just now exploring the topic of, of natural wellness, uh, considering how to better care for their family in a more natural way, where would you point them? So what are some trusted resources they could go to, some sites, etc., that you could uh, you could point us to? Yeah, so I would say the the Price Weston Foundation in general has great resources. Sally Fallon's nutritional Nourishing Traditions. It's a big yellow book. It's really good. She, I don't know if she's a Christian. The book isn't necessarily Christian, um, but it's just chock it's full of resource. good information that you need to know. You need to know it. Um, buy it for your wife. Buy it for a young married couple. Buy it for people. It's good. Uh, a follow-up to that one is Nutrition and Physical Degeneration. I think that's what it's called. It's by uh, Weston Price, the the dentist. So the he founder. went all around the world and he studied cultures who were eating the things that they'd eaten forever, and they were healthy and they had beautiful teeth with no cavities. That's not a it's not a mystery. It's not something that shouldn't happen. We all used to be relatively healthy and have beautiful teeth until we started eating all the junk that we eat now. <laughs> um, so. And if I can add one related to food, uh, one of the things that really uh, changed my perspective, uh, and I might shoot myself in the foot here by, by offering this, she doesn't know what I'm about to say, um, I would encourage you to find Food Inc. Mm. It's on. It was on Amazon Prime, free at one time. I don't know if it is. It was on Netflix at one time. Uh, if you want a copy of it and you can't afford it, reach out to us. We have a copy here. If you're local to us, you can borrow it. Whatever. I would. I would strongly encourage you. Um, it will, it will impact how you see the food production system 
uh, outside of local sustainable farming. Uh, and, and that was Starla's whole first point, that, that uh, food is medicine. And if you're starting from a flawed standpoint, doesn't matter what else you do, everything else is going to be hijacked. Yeah, I mean, the food that you buy, it can't, you have to buy food because you have to live. And it's way easier just to buy whole ingredients, food that your great-great-grandparents would have looked at and been like, that's food. Because they'd look at a candy bar and be like, what are you eating? Like, if you buy raw ingredients and you turn it into food, it's pretty hard for that to be super unhealthy for you. And it's pretty hard to be obese on it. It just is because your body's like, oh, I'm full. It's not, it's easy to not be full when all you're eating is candy bars and chips and stuff like that. But if you're mostly eating a diet that is just whole foods that you prepared yourself, your body just naturally doesn't want to eat as much of that stuff. So check out those resources check out Food Inc. Uh, There's so much more from there. There is a whole rabbit's hole that you can go down. Once you, you know, get on the tip of the iceberg, you will slide down and and you can see everything that's out there for yourself. But that's a good starting point for for folks to check out. So obviously this this topic isn't uh, one that makes us like super exciting and popular right it it can be controversial um to buck against the modern um medical machine that's out there and again uh we just have to be clear that we are not medical professionals um we're not diagnosing we're not treating we're not prescribing stuff um, all we're doing is is sharing some options and some alternatives and some practices that we have and that we have developed and we are still developing over the years as a family and how we try to maintain some wellness. So I hope this has been encouraging and challenging to you. Um, our kids are getting restless and we need to wrap up this recording. So as always, thank you for listening. We appreciate it if you would share, like, comment. Uh, Subscribe to the channel if you have not already. And until next time, be fruitful.